Hello and welcome to the Trey Hart Education Channel. My name is Ray Upchurch. This is part one of the Heart Beats On. Today we're going to be talking about stethoscopes. Whether it's in a clinic setting or in the hospital, if you see a nurse or a doctor, most likely they will have a stethoscope either in their hands, around their neck, or in a part of their uniforms. So how did stethoscopes come about? Well, in 1816 there was a doctor by the name of Dr. René Leonès. He was a French doctor. In those days, the only way that you could listen to a patient's heart if you desired to do so was by putting your head to their chest. Well, Dr. Leonis had a desire to develop cardiac oscillation. So one day, there was a patient that came in, and it was a female patient. He didn't feel it was too appropriate to listen to her heart by putting his head to her chest. So he thought about this. At first, he thought he might would cup his hands, put them over his ears, and then listen to her chest that way. Well, that didn't seem appropriate either. It is during this conundrum that Dr. Lannis remembered that one day he had saw two children playing. One child had a hollow tube. He had put it to his ear, while the other child scratched on the end. Well, as he thought about this, he went and got himself a piece of paper, wrote up one end of the piece of paper and put it to his ear, put the other end over the patient's heart, and listened. He was able to hear the patient's heart using the piece of paper. Later, Dr. Lannis refined this piece of paper by making it into a wooden tube, something that resembled the candlestick of the day. Though Dr. Lannis like to learn about cardiac oscillation. It was uh, Dr. Joseph Skoda who actually described the heart sounds. It was Dr. Skoda who pinpointed the location and defined the clinical oscillatory signs that could give us a diagnosis in relation to these heart sounds. So, a good stethoscope is important to each medical practitioner. So why is a good stethoscope important? Well, the human ear can hear sounds up to 20,000 hertz. It is most sensitive to sounds between 1,000 and 5,000 hertz. Well, heart sounds are only 1,000 hertz. That's why most common stethoscopes have a bell and a diaphragm, such as this one. Let's take a look at the stethoscopes. You can see here two stethoscopes that I have. Uh, one is the Lippmann Cardiology stethoscope. It's the one that I use to record the volunteer heart sounds of the patients in these tutorials. The other one is the Sprague stethoscope. It's one of my oldie but goodies. Let's label some of the parts of the stethoscope. On the right is the bell. On the left is the diaphragm. We can see that. These two together are called the chest piece. We also have the tubing, we have the brace of the stethoscope, we have the bionrolls, and we also have the ear tips. All of these together make up the parts of the stethoscope. You may be wondering, how do I choose a stethoscope? Well, I personally only have one criterion. That is this. Does this stethoscope allow me to hear both high and low frequencies adequately? If it does, well, that's the stethoscope I choose. I've learned, unfortunately, that not every stethoscope that says it's a cardiac stethoscope is actually a cardiac stethoscope. I've also learned that more expensive does not necessarily mean better. I've learned through experience that there are some stethoscopes that are best to be avoided. These stethoscopes are usually those cheap stethoscopes that come like with a blood pressure cuff or those ones that are provided in the barrier rooms. The reason is, is these usually have ill-fitting plastic on the end of them, so it doesn't provide good oscillation. Plus, they only have one side, so they don't have the, the bell on the other. So you can't hear both high and low frequencies adequately with these type of stethoscopes. 
So now we got our stethoscopes. How do we take care of it? Well, the first thing I always suggest, read the instructions. I know you're probably thinking it's a stethoscope, so how hard can it be? Well, unfortunately, I've seen many a practitioner put the ear tips in the wrong way into their ears, um, just simply because they didn't read the instructions that were provided. Secondly, I would advise you not to share your stethoscopes. If you do share it, be sure and clean the ear tips after you get it back, and clean your stethoscope as well. Thirdly, I would advise you that between every patient, clean your stethoscope. This is very, very, very important. Always clean your stethoscopes when you walk in the room before you see the patient and when you walk out after you see the patient. Fourth, I would advise you to inspect your stethoscope on a regular basis. Look over the tubing of the stethoscope. If your tubing is starting to get cracks, don't tape over it. For one, that's a harbor of germs. For two, if your stethoscope's starting to get cracked, then the tubing's going bad and you're gonna get bad sound transmission anyhow. Fifth, I would advise you not to leave it at work. If you do leave it at work, leave it in your locker or in a safe place where nobody else can get to it. Why? Well, if you leave it, other people will use it, and sometimes they might mistake it as their own, and you will never see it again. Sixth, I would advise you never take your stethoscope into barrier rooms. You have to trust me, it's better to use those cheap disposable ones than to take yours into the barrier room accidentally forget it in there, or accidentally throw it away. So it's better to throw away the cheap ones than to throw away yours. Well, this has been my discussion on stethoscopes. I hope it has been informative, and I hope you will join me again when we talk about the anatomy and physiology of cardiac oscillation, of heart sounds. That will be coming soon. Tune in.